Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Dr. Jean Sander. She is a technical services veterinarian for Zoetis. Great to see you, Jean. Good to be here, Joe. Now, biosecurity is so important to the poultry industry right now, but it really needs to begin in the hatchery, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know, the, the quality of the chick coming out of the hatchery is going to be so critical to the productivity of those broilers and even the food safety aspect. Now, you recently did a study involving bacteria on the eggshells that were going into incubation. Um, could you tell us about that and, and really, and what prompted the study? I look at the incubation period as something that's very unique in, in birds because with mammals it goes right from the parent to the baby. We have this intermediate step that mammals don't have and we have a lot of potential to really screw things up in that period of time. So where this all started was there was a, a company who came to us and said, our bacterial counts on the surface of the eggs are higher than they should be, and we want to know what's going on. So a clean hatching egg should be, uh, uh, the bacteria on a clean hatching egg should decline during the incubation period, but in this case they weren't. So we went in and we assessed eggs uh, in the eggs, egg holding room to see what the bacterial levels were there, and then also assessed them just before they were transferred uh, to see if those bacterial counts were indeed staying high. And, and specifically, what bacteria are we looking at here? We were looking really in, in gen generally, but most of the time those bacteria are gonna be enteric or gut bacteria, E. coli, uh, enterococcus, bacillus, things like that. All right. But we weren't at that point worried too much about what types they were. Um, we, we wanted to see if we were, in fact, reducing those numbers as a clean hatching egg would during incubation or not. Interestingly, we found that two of their hatcheries were doing exactly what was supposed to happen. The eggs come in with a certain bacterial level at transfer. Those eggs were essentially clean. But two of their hatcheries had bacteria levels at the beginning and in some cases actually increased during the incubation period. And what did you attribute that to? Well, that was what the big question was. How come that was happening? So we spent a lot of time focusing on those two hatcheries where the bacterial loads were increasing to see if we could identify where that was happening. And we were able to uh, identify a couple of points where those bacteria were a potential source of contamination. And one was the wet bulb reservoir in those setters. Um, they were teeming with bacteria that in fact matched the bacteria that we were finding on the surface of the eggs. And then there was a hose also that they were using to wash down the floors of those set, uh, incubators that carried the same bacteria. So what do you do about that? Well, a good sanitation program uh, is going to be need to be put in place. Um, one of the things that I found that I think we as a company can do better is when we do those bacterial surveys, that those wet bulb reservoirs need to be a point of, of regular uh, culture, and it hasn't been in the past. So I think this was a, a discovery that's going to help a lot of people um, find out if, what those wet bulb reservoir bacterial uh, loads are and develop a, a sanitation program to make sure those get cleaned regularly, disinfectants put into those wet bulb reservoirs, and that's going to reduce the uh, potential contamination under those hatching eggs. And, and let's talk about the potential of that mm -hmm. contamination, because uh, obviously bacteria doesn't sound like a good thing to have in the hatchery, but if left unchecked, what are the ramifications? Well, if those uh, bacteria um, aerosolize and, and land on the surface of those eggs, when those eggs are taken out of the incubator uh, to be transferred to the hatcher, we've got a couple of, of points of, of concern. One is if they're using the Inovaject, the bacteria on the surface of that egg can actually be injected into the egg. So that's why sanitation of those egg surfaces is so critical. Then in addition, when those chicks hatch three days later, they come out of the shell and they're not fully uh, dried off and, and formed. Their navels are still open. They can, they can let those wet, open navels come into contact with the dirty eggshells and the bacteria then can go retrograde up and cause infection inside those baby chicks. What else can we be doing in the hatchery in terms of raising the bar for biosecurity and minimizing bacteria in these birds? 
Yeah, uh, a good a good program into the breeders in breeder health is is going to be where it's going to start. You're going to want to make sure that those breeders are having good enteric health. They're well trained to lay their eggs in the nest instead of on the floor because floor eggs are going to have a higher level of contamination. A good salmonella vaccination program because that is one of the bacteria that can be transferred through. Um, and then when you get into the hatchery, making sure that the egg packs, the eggs you're setting, are going to be clean eggs. Um, your hatchery sanitation program is, is very thorough and um, that you're, you're managing those chicks once they do hatch in a way that's going to maximize their well-being and make sure they're robust by the time they get placed into the broiler house. And you mentioned the floor eggs in particular having a higher level of bacteria. What can be done about that specifically? I mean, is there a way that you can clean these eggs better to try to salvage them, or, or is it best to just not use them altogether? It's best not to use them if you can, but when there's a shortage of hatching eggs, some companies are, are required to, to set those. But um, hens need to have a good training program. Some breeds of hens are going to be more likely to lay into a nest naturally, but others are going to just lay eggs wherever they are. And so a good training program when those hens first start coming into lay is going to be important. No dark areas, no uh, um, areas where those hens, that, that's going to look more appealing to that hen as a nest than the nest boxes. One other question, you mentioned the uh, Innovaject or any kind of Innovo vaccination and the uh, opportunity to introduce bacteria. Now, there was a time when genomycin was being used in the hatchery to, to solve that issue. Um, it was considered not responsible use, so people have, a lot of hatcheries have gotten away from it. Um, and I've heard some reports that there are a few companies out there that have said, well, we're just not going to do the Innovo vaccination at all. We'll, we don't see Marix, we'll, we'll worry about vaccination in the field. What are your thoughts about that from a veterinary standpoint? Boy, I, um, I think that that's a big mistake. I think that what, what, what that's doing is avoiding a very essential and well-documented preventive medicine program when in fact the better alternative in my mind would be to make sure your hatchery sanitation is adequate. Those eggs that we set in this study, I had no way of knowing if they were a floor egg or not. All I knew is that they were visibly clean when I, when I tested them. And so making sure that those egg packs are, are as clean as can be and that your hatchery sanitation program is maximized, I think is a better way to go than avoiding an ovaject.